Okay, everyone. Again, thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, the next presentation is called Switchgear Modernization Solutions. Uh, my name is Scott Brady. I am the regional manager for our engineering services technical application support team. Um, I started actually as a field service engineer with Westinghouse Engineering Services and have worked through various roles as service manager, um, application engineer, and now in this current role as well. So our agenda for today is we're gonna talk about what is switchgear modernization solutions, um, when to consider it, and we're gonna talk about the standard that really is important when deciding to use switchgear modernization, which is IEEE C37.59. So this is solutions to renovate existing equipment. Uh, We've all seen out there electrical equipment tends to last a very long time. Uh, could last as long as 60 years if well maintained. I, I've even seen older than that before in the bowels of some uh, very old customers. But this is a way to extend the life of that equipment and do it safely. And there are many other reasons for doing it as well. And we're gonna go over those reasons. So one of the major reasons right now that we're seeing a lot of activity with switchgear modernization is these ridiculous lead times that are out there for new equipment. So uh, we have customers that are looking for solutions to extend their existing equipment so that you know, they don't have to turn to getting new equipment, which as you probably all know, can be upwards of a year. Um, the other thing is our clash safety and our clash mitigation. Uh, adding features to existing equipment to help make it safer to operate, make it safer for uh, everyone who interacts with it. And then this is what happens when it's unsafe. If, if it's degraded too much, you see an explosion. Uh, I've done several investigations like this. Uh, it's never a good scene. Uh, fortunately, many of them that I've been to have not been when people have gotten injured. So uh, another thing is the equipment might be repurposed for a different function. Uh, you know, the equipment loads change, you know, different uh, customer has moved into a building and they have a different application. So you need to reconfigure the equipment for that new application. Removal might not be economical. Uh, I've seen once in a hospital where they built, this was actually a VA hospital where they built the electrical equipment in the bottom of the hospital and they built, uh, they used to like ship, like the turn hatches for a ship to enter the electrical room. It was incredibly unfeasible to even get into this electrical room. So it was really, the only alternative was to just modernize what they have. Yeah, you know, the, the roof was sealed. There was no way into this vault. Uh, updating equipment with new communication features, things like that, things that you saw in the last presentation. Uh, there is an ability to take equipment that was built in the 70s and 80s and put in new communication features into it. Uh, multiple brands of electrical equipment, uh, making service renewal parts a nightmare. Um, you have, you know, equipment manufacturers don't make parts and pieces forever for old equipment, so sometimes it's best to move on to new equipment, but this allows kind of the best of both worlds where you can get the advantages of the new equipment, current renewal parts, but you don't have to spend the capital to just replace the entire equipment in place. Uh, and then equipment is just obsolete and no longer supported by the manufacturer or the manufacturer has gone completely out of business. How many people have seen that particular breaker out there? There's a lot of laughing over here. It's not a good sight, is it? No, it's not. Uh -huh. Yeah, I saw this particular breaker once in a hospital very early on in my career, and when you pull it out of the cell, the cell actually wavers back and forth. So it's very, it's very scary. You didn't want to like reinsert it real fast. And then again, kind of talked about this before, your equipment is landlocked. 
Uh, it's no longer possible to remove it. The switch gear is okay. So we know that most of the switch gear is just this fixed copper or aluminum bus. Um, it's not moving. It's not seeing a lot of, well, unless it's in California, it might be moving a little bit. Um, but it's, it's not really seeing any kind of mechanical stresses other than maybe if it saw a fault or something like that. But the circuit breakers are operating. They're, they're kind of the, the one that needs the maintenance and to be maintained. So uh, we tend to focus a lot of switchgear modernization solutions on circuit breakers, since that is obviously what usually fails early in the environment. So, so there's really two solutions. You can recondition your circuit breakers or you can replace them. So there's advantages, of course, to replacing them. It's higher cost, of course, um, but it allows you to upgrade to today's technology. Uh, it might extend maintenance intervals. It might be a new product that doesn't require as much maintenance as the previous product did. Um, renewal parts are available. Um, you might be able to increase short circuit capacity or meet new ratings. And it can extend the switch gear life back up to that 30 year typical threshold that you see out there. Um, then there's just the simple cleaning and relubrication. That's that's the lowest cost solution. Uh, probably really depends on what kind of circuit breaker it was to begin with and how well it was manufactured, how effective that will be. Um, usually you're looking at one to three year service intervals. Um, and then we also offer a service called full reconditioning. Um, and in fact, if you go outside to the right, uh, you'll see a display of a fully reconditioned Westinghouse DS breaker. TJ can uh, show you about it. Uh, but again, that can re, re extend that lifespan up to another 10 years. Again, but you don't get a lot of the other benefits uh, that you could possibly with new. But again, there's a cost basis there. But of course, so renewal parts remain an issue when you do that. So now we're gonna talk about uh, the standard that's associated with doing these services, which is C37.59. Uh, the current version is 2018. Um, it's for conversion of power switch gear equipment. Who's heard of this standard before? One, two in the back, oh good, okay. So why was this created? So users recognize that circuit breakers reach the end of life quicker than the switch gear in which they were installed. Uh, switch gear was not an, an option because of some of the solutions we just talked about. Uh, end users were overhauling or having to breakers all to a point that it is just cheap to buy a new breaker. Uh, as manufacturers introduced new equipment, they discontinued some of the older stuff as well. So early aftermarket methods, uh, there were a lot of players in this market uh, from what we would call used equipment dealers to OEMs, uh, trying different things to uh, modernize equipment. Um, but there were inherent design issues with what some of the people were doing. Um, and of course, a fatality changed the game. Um, so, for example, when a lot of uh, different solution providers in this in this point were taking old medium voltage air circuit breakers and retrofitting them with vacuum technology, um, and there are consequences. There, there's obviously a lot of benefits with using a, a vacuum element versus an air element as far as size and durability and things like that. But there are also technical consequences to doing that that probably weren't looked at real closely by some of the people who were doing these things. So that was kind of like why IEEE, the P Power Engineering Services, uh, Power and Energy Society stepped in and decided to come up with this standard uh, so that there were some rules around what you could do and what you could do and can't do and what kind of testing is involved in doing all this. So the first version was uh, published in 1991, um, and it focused on uh, design verification on retrofitted circuit breakers and switchgear conversions, uh, looking at continuous current, BIL, short time mechanical servicing, and uh, endurance 
of the interlocks. Again, a lot, a lot around the safety configurations of the circuit breaker. And after the first version came, the supplier network kind of changed. It became more involved in the, the equipment OEMs. Uh, we're, you know, obviously we're much more familiar with doing a lot of those tests, had a lot of laboratories to do those tests and the verifications that were out there. Um, the designs kind of moved to a standardized section, you know, I know even uh, at Westinghouse, we were doing this, these type of modifications in various offices. We moved them all to one central location, uh, focused all those standardizations there. And uh, there were fewer people, you know, one and two uh, companies doing them here and there that were doing these type of conversions. Uh, and end users started making more educated purposes at purchases because these things, uh, you know, when there's a fatality in the industry, there's, a lot of information goes out about what happened and and uh, as those things came out, uh, a lot of people realized the, the need for some kind of standard around this. So in the 30 years since that, is, that standard has come out, there's a lot of different uh, conversions that have come out, uh, a lot of different products and by various manufacturers. Um, a lot of people realized that this was a very big need in the industry. So uh, 2018, just a couple of changes that were in there. Uh, also addressed arc resistance switch gear, so added some guidance on medium voltage fuse contactors. Uh, requirements were expanded to talk about minimum design testing and uh, guidance for adding viewing windows and ports in switchgear, which is a very popular thing that's going on right now, uh, you know, due to arc flash safety. People want to put uh, viewing ports into their existing equipment and how to do that safely without violating the integrity of the switchgear. So C37.59 has the following items in its scope, reconditioning, Roll-in replacement circuit breakers, vacuum starter replacements, retrofill applications, <laughs> conversion of metal unclosed switch gear, new trip device conversions, and addition of the ports in the switch gear. Now, something uh, that might have picked up from Tom's presentation, you know, the dot two, the reconditioning. So you hear this term being used over and over again is reconditioning, kind of being standardized as the language out there. So one major distinction, distinction was made though, for older equipment, the converter must use the preferred ratings and performance criteria that were in effect at the time of the original switch gear being converted was manufactured. Now this, this can kind of be problematic because the standards were different back uh, with some of the older switch gear. Uh, some of them were actually more rigorous than they are today. So you might have difficulties uh, just replacing with same, same, what, what was 65K back then might not be 65K now as far as how it's tested. And then another thing, a converter shall not knowingly convert a design without taking or recommending appropriate action to correct the defect in any assembly being converted. So uh, there are some inherent issues with uh, some of the equipment out there. And this statement is kind of like you need to resolve some of those inherent issues with the equipment. Uh, there's some very dangerous designs out there. Uh, there are some medium voltage breakers that have a levering system where you literally have to lever the breaker onto the bus. Um, I've been in a power plant with one of those on it and the operators were terrified of it. They would only call us to do it for them, which we weren't real happy with doing either. Um, but uh, we did make a vacuum replacement breaker that has that levering system. So it turns into a typical horizontal screw type system uh, to remove that problem. So first, we're gonna, in the next topic, we're gonna talk about the terminology in C37.59. And I just wanted to start by saying, you notice the one thing that's missing, the one piece of language that's missing that I've never said yet is the term retrofit. 
So we hear a lot of people talk about retrofits. So retrofit is not a recognized term by IEEE or ANSI. So we are avoiding the word retrofit, um, trying to stay with conversion or reconditioning, which are, which are defined. And then uh, we have everything from non-interchangeable replacement circuit breaker. This is a circuit breaker that utilizes all new parts and has been uh, tested to C37.09 and C37.50. Um, but it requires conversion of existing switchgear to properly maintain. Reconditioning, so this is the product that you can see just outside these stores here. Um, this is a process of maintaining existing switchgear equipment in operating condition as recommended by the manufacturer's instructions, only using qualified parts. Uh, again, it very specifically says you cannot reverse engineer parts. And I believe there is even uh, language in the National Electric Code to that effect now as well. And again, just requiring design verification. And here is an example of what reconditioning can do. This is a uh, medium voltage breaker. So you can see on the left, not in very good shape after reconditioning, which involves taking the breaker apart, uh, putting it in various sandblasters and uh, replating, things like that. that. That is what you could get out of it, which is you know, basically you're creating a brand new breaker at that point. And some of these older breakers are very well designed. So, uh, you know, they're made of steel and um, so this process works very well on them. An interchangeable replacement circuit breaker. So this is a circuit breaker that uses all new parts um, and requires no conversion of existing switch gear to maintain proper operation. So. In this case, this circuit breaker can go into the switchgear cell of an existing circuit breaker and you don't have to change anything. So it's a very simple rack out the old breaker, rack this one in. You could even use the old breaker as a spare uh, or send it off to be reconditioned to have a spare on the site, um, but it gives you a brand new breaker with brand new technology. And then there's the next terminology is a retrofill. So this is a conversion process that includes replacement of the circuit breaker and the circuit breaker compartment. So unlike the previous one, this is not backwards compatible. You're gonna change out the cell in the switch gear. You're gonna put in new technology and you can see here from the left to the right is the picture of before and after. So you get a brand new, brand new breaker, new cell components, but you have no backwards compatibility at all to the old breaker. And um, the advantage of this is, is you get all the new technology, the through-the-door design, um, easier to maintain, things like that. So the key word on there was qualified design. So we do see um, a lot of people out there doing these type of retrofills, um, but there is inherent issues that need to be confirmed when you do a retrofill. So just because you're putting in the new breaker doesn't mean it has all the same characteristics of the old breaker, specifically heating. So you wanna make sure that when someone is doing this, they have looked at it from a design standpoint and uh, making sure that uh, it has been verified, that it is going to work in that particular application. And uh, the next terminal, so basically this cell goes into the cell, goes up into that compartment, and then now we have a horizontal breaker, which is what you see today, that goes into that cell and it operates just like a normal horizontal breaker and you never have to deal with that vertical lift mechanism again, which has got a lot of inherent issues with it. And there are a ton of these out there. Power plants and anything with the uh, G turbine probably has a ton of those in it, so. 
And then in conversion, so this is the process of altering existing power switchgear equipment from a qualified design. So this is a solution that we do a lot. There might be probably some slides in a later presentation talking about this as well with arc flash mitigation. So again, this goes back, Tom touched upon this a little bit on his, the most dangerous part of a, see does this have a little laser pointer on it? The most dangerous part of a unit substation is this secondary of the transformer. This is again, just like Tom indicated before, when there's a fuse there, you're, you're working with the protection of that fuse that determines the arc flash incident energy on that low voltage side, which is gonna be extremely high. So the solution is to retrofit or re, do a conversion. See, I, I even used that word wrong. Uh, use a conversion to convert that fuse to a circuit breaker. And we, al we also add current sensors to the low voltage side. So it kind of looks like this. So you have your original uh, medium voltage switch, and instead of a fuse truck, you have a, a circuit breaker put in there, uh, controls and relaying. Here's another picture of one. Again, the switch with where the fuses would go. Now you put a circuit breaker, and you can see this is kind of a, a diagram of what it would look like for your substation. And in this particular instance, if you look at the uh, incident energy calculations, so before it's at 185, which is unapproachable. Um, and now afterwards we have it down to 1.4. So it's a significant safety issue. Um, sure, many of you have done designs uh, of unit substations uh, like this. They're all over the place from water treatment plants to almost every single uh, customer has this type of design unit um, that was very prevalent, so. And just a little extra on this, uh, th there is an issue caused by putting a vacuum breaker uh, where that switch is in front of the transformer, uh, depending upon the transformer design. So we do uh, recommend looking at putting in a snubber to uh, dampen the chop current caused by the vacuum breaker, which might damage the transformer, so. That's kind of that before and after slide again. So design verification. So this is another term that's defined in C37.59. So this is a process of design qualification in accordance with appropriate standards. So design testing is very different from production testing or preventive maintenance tests. So another tactic that I've seen do by some companies is they will do one of these conversions and they will test it to like need a ATS. Well, that's not acceptable. It needs to be more of a production type test. Need ATS is a maintenance standard. That's not a valid test for, for verifying the operation of something that you've done uh, complete design change on. And again, this is a, breaker interchangeable circuit breaker. This is a medium voltage one. And you might hear these called roll-in replacement circuit breakers. Again, this is take out the old circuit breaker, rolls right out of the cell. You can roll the, the new one right in, in its place. Uh, it's still reverse compatible as well. And uh, air fuse contactor. So what you find, especially, does anyone call a lot on utility generation plants? Not a lot of utility here. Um, so in, you see this a lot in utility generation plants where they are using circuit breakers as motor starters. A lot of that has to do with that the um, fault current in the power plant is very, very high. So uh, the contactors back in the day couldn't withstand them. So they use circuit breakers for motor starters. But when you use a circuit breaker for a motor starter, motor starters made to operate many, many times a day. 
circuit breaker is not really designed for that many operations. Uh, so this allows a solution to that problem where we actually change out that circuit breaker into a contactor based uh, configuration uh, to give them those kind of operations so they're not wearing this equipment out. And again, this is uh, another example of the uh, non-interchangeable circuit breaker. So it requires the conversion of existing switch gear to maintain proper operation. That conversion might require installation of a compartment adapter. So, and the last term is uh, remote racking. Uh, so racking is defined as well uh, remote racking devices have become very, very popular. Uh, sometimes you'll hear it called levering, um, but uh, these devices do uh, are available. So again, you can remotely rack out a circuit breaker and take the uh, operator out of the uh, arc flash boundary while that's going on. And I'm sure you're aware that new equipment, some of this is integral to new equipment as well. So yeah, I got us back on target for lunch. So key takeaways, switchgear modernization offers options that can be more economical and faster than a replacement of switchgear. Uh, if you're going to spec one of these solutions, insert, ensure the switchgear modernizations conform to IEEE C37.59 and make sure design verification is completed to applicable standard, not maintenance standards. Questions?